Hey guys, welcome back to BJ Tech News, episode 44. This is a, the part three of the SCCM series that I've been creating uh, for my YouTube channel. Uh, today's episode, I'm dealing with more of setting and configuring the site system roles. Okay, uh, so let's get into it. Uh, so I open up the configuration manager console and I'm gonna go into the site management and I'm gonna click into my my site and go to site settings go to site systems and I'm gonna go into my BJ SCCM server this is my server right here okay guys and by default these are the these are the roles that the server or the console is already installed with. You got your config manager component server, your config di uh, distribution point, manager point, site server, site system. Manager point is very important uh, if this is your very first uh, ma your very first SCCM server into your network. Okay. Most likely in other parts, I will show you how to configure this stuff. But for now, I just want to show you guys how to add a new row and the way that you add a new row is you right click on the server name uh, you choose new row that will bring up the new site row wizard okay you want to accept all the defaults as is okay and once you hit next okay so these are the these are the available roles that you can install so I'm gonna choose server locator point Okay, I'm going to choose state migration point, reporting point, and software update point. Okay, the Pixie server point, I'm going to probably do that later on uh, when we when I start creating um, the videos for implementing or importing. An operating system into SCCM, and then I have to create the Pixie server point so I can push it out, just like the MDT. Again, SCCM is like MDT and steroids. You know, you can do a lot, lot, much more with SCCM. The only problem is, is that SCCM you have to pay for it. MDT, I think it's free, um, and you can download it and install it. Okay. Um, the reason why I'm installing. Um, the server locator point. Now, the server the server locator point. Um, you only install this if you haven't um, extended your schema. Now, I extended my schema, I believe, in episode one when I was installing uh, SCCM into my network. But this is because I'm installing this because when doing a build and capture of an operating system, best practice means that computer is not joined. To the domain right so therefore it, it cannot get the information it needs from the AD so therefore we need to retrieve that somehow so that's why we need the SLP SLP just stands for uh, server locator point so that's the whole reason of that okay um, I think the next thing to do is I'm only gonna do these for now and I'm gonna hit next and this is for the server locator point so I'm gonna use the site database okay and use the server locator point for the computer account I'm gonna leave this all default okay I'm gonna hit next now when it gets to the point of the server migration point you want to go right here specify how the state migration point should store client state migration data so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let's see let's see uh, let's go see and uh, SMP for state migration point and I probably need to create this folder again most likely you guys are going to have hopefully you guys have a, another partition that you're putting this in I don't recommend actually putting this into the root of the SCCM server okay once you do that you press ok you can change the settings right here deletion policy specify when the state migration point should remove data mark for deletion I'll leave it as default delete after one day 
Um, if you want to restore only mode, this is up to you. Specify whether the state migration point should reject new requests to store state migration data and respond only for restore requests. I won't bother with that. Uh, we're going to hit next. And the next one is your reporting point. Okay. This is uh, the reporting folder. This is a URL. Uh, by default, it goes to HTTP port 80. Now, if you guys are using port 80 for anything like a web server in your infrastructure, in your, you know, in your environment, hey, you most likely want to change the port. Uh, if not, leave it as is. I'm going to leave it as is. Just make note of this. I'm actually going to make note of this guy right here. And I'm going to open up Notepad++. And I'm going to paste this right there. Just want to make a note, make sure that you know the reporting uh, URL. Hit next. Uh, then you have uh, your software update point. Now, if you guys install WSUS 3.0 SP1 version, like I did before, I actually installed it within the SCCM console. Okay? So this will allow you to use that feature. Okay? Uh, I will put. Put a check mark if you use a proxy server for synchronizing. This is up to you. If not, just leave it be. Hit next. Uh, the active server update point communicates with the Windows server update, WSUS server, configure software update settings, and synchronize software updates metadata. Specify whether the site system server is the active software update point of the site. Use this server as the active. No. I won't leave that. I leave it as is. Matter of fact, yes, yes, yes. Matter of fact, yes. Yeah. This server is the active server update point. I do apologize. Remember, I did install WSUS into this machine, so this is the active software update point. Okay, I do apologize for that. Um, okay, so what you want to do is hit next. Uh, synchronize Microsoft updates yes this is what you want do not create WSUS reporting events I leave all this as default so accept the uh, sync schedule defaults hit next and if you want uh, check to see if you want to say software updates can be synchronized manually or a schedule can be set to automatic synchronize this is up to you I'm gonna enable this let's do it uh, let's do every seven days that's the default let's leave it as the seven days hit next classifications is up to you what you guys want to download into your WSUS uh, I won't I don't want to overload this virtual machine but most likely you guys are going to pick more than what I'm picking so I'm just going to pick security updates okay hit next uh, what products you guys want to get I picked office and windows all the windows stuff uh, I won't do that I won't do that I won't do that not that and I keep everything else again I don't want to overload my SCCM sir it's, it's a virtual machine but most likely when you guys I do recommend having SCCM on a physical server I don't recommend it doing on a virtual machine because you guys are just overloading so much into it um, again most likely if in your environment if you ever have a WSUF server you have it on another machine if you the only thing that you need on your SCCM to to connect to your um, your WSUF server is you need to have the WSUF console installed on SCCM to talk to your WSUS but because I didn't want to I didn't have enough space on my machine I just installed everything in one um, server hit next all the languages that you want uh, no 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 uh, yes I want English mom check all this stuff I don't need all these languages but most likely if you're supporting if you're supporting other uh, offices in other different countries and you do need these uh, languages, hey, by all means, check what you need. But by default, I'm just going to use English. Hit next. Uh, a nice little summary. Hit next. And it's going to start doing its magic. Okay. Once it does its magic, 
Uh, you guys are going to get this nice little new site row wizard completed successful. And you're going to click close. And uh, once you hit close, you're basically going to see all the new rows that you guys installed. And that's about it for this episode. Uh, the next episode, hopefully, when I got some time, guys, I'm going to show you how to start configuring the rows. Uh, have your SCCM start talking to your Active direct Directory to so start pushing down and grabbing computers and as well as user accounts and hopefully cross the fingers I can show you guys how to create an application and how to deploy it as well as configuring the client to push it to a machine hopefully you guys enjoy this episode and um, please subscribe to my channel uh, again if you have any issues you can also go to my blog I have a lot of good articles in there my blog is bjtechnews.wordpress.com if you guys have a Twitter account you would like to follow me at bjtechnews and I check you guys later thank you so much for the support thank you subscribe thank you